your girl Lena with another video. Welcome to my channel if you are new and if you are a returning person and you've seen a couple of my videos, welcome back. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel, like this video, give it a thumbs up, okay, and share it. And comment below if you have things that you want to respond about in this video or just an idea that you have for a video that you want me to talk about or create for you. Okay, share those comments below, all right? Today's video is going to be about the power of your tongue. The tongue, yes, the tongue. I don't know why I'm out here sticking out my tongue. Like, <laughs> okay, but yes, today is gonna be the power of the tongue, okay? All right, so um, this video, uh, I'm, I'm happy to make it just because um, this is something that I had to work on in my life. I mean, everything I talk about, I think I've had to work on in my life, honestly. Um, but sometimes we underestimate the power of our tongue and what our tongue can do for our life. Um, and so I am going to be coming from a biblical perspective of um, what God says uh, about our tongue and, you know, just how we should conduct ourselves and speak okay because it's really really important there is truly life and death in your tongue okay all right so let's get started um so a woman has the power to tear down her home yes she has the power to either tear, tear down her home with her tongue with just her tongue okay she can build her home up or she can tear it down okay and it really matters, okay, that as women, that we have a mouth that speaks with love, life, okay, and kindness. So there are many scriptures throughout the Bible where God talks about the power of the tongue and how important it is to guard your mouth, okay, and to guard the things that comes out of your lips. To share a few, in Proverbs 13, 3, God says, whoever guards his mouth preserves his life, okay? But he who opens wide his lips comes to ruin, okay? So it's really important that you guard your mouth, you guard your lips, and learn to preserve the things that you're speaking about. And the guy also says in Proverbs 18, 2, that a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but in expressing his own opinion, okay? So a person who is foolish is always wanting to be understood by other people and share their opinion, but they're not looking for understanding. They're not looking to understand others. They're not looking to understand God. Proverbs 21, 28 tells us that whoever keeps his mouth and tongue keeps himself out of trouble. In Psalms 141, 3, that verse states, it's like a call out to God saying, God, set a guard, O Lord over my mouth, keep watch over the door of my lips, okay? So it's even important, okay, that we as believers see the importance of um, asking God to guard our lips, okay? Guard what we say, okay? To help us get control in that area because just like the Bible has said in many of these scriptures and many more scriptures throughout the Bible, our, our tongue can bring about so much destruction, so much ruin, okay and sometimes we're not raised that way we're sometimes raised to voice your opinion voice your mouth voice what you want to say speak 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 which it's not anything wrong you know with you know sharing your opinion or sharing things but it matters how you do it when you do it and in a way that how you present it so why do words matter so words do so words do matter Okay, we can see that through those few scriptures I've shared. And I guarantee if you go and you look in your Bible and look up more scriptures, you will see, just look up, you know, a foolish person and, and the power of the tongue and, and lips. Like search those words, do go on Google and do a Bible verse search. You will see the power of, of our tongue and why it's so important to guard that aspect of our lives. The impact of negative words out of a woman's mouth. 
which can tear down a, a woman's home. Because in Proverbs 14, 1, even though it doesn't explicitly state that a woman's mouth is what's the tearing down of her home, it says that a woman's hands, that a woman can tear down her own home with just her own hands, okay? And that doesn't mean necessarily she's going to go start pulling and destroying her house with her hands, but it's just saying that it is up to the woman that in how she conducts herself, how she behaves, how she is as a person, she can destroy her home, okay? So yes, ladies, you can destroy your home by being someone who speaks death, someone who speaks negativity into her husband or into her, ch into her children, okay? The impact of negative words on children is very detrimental, okay? Women, children don't forget what you told them. If you're telling your child, oh, you're just as dumb as your father, or you're stupid, or you will never be anything, or you will be amount to nothing, or you're a dummy, or you're stupid, they're going to internalize those words, and they're going to grow up with that on their heart. Even if to you, you meant no harm by it. Even to you, if that was how you talked or talked to, whatever the case may be, it was not right. Because your children are building their self-esteem, their self-worth off of you. And if you speak to them in a negative way like that, that destroys their character. It will destroy them. Okay? Even if they did something stupid, do you need to call them stupid? Maybe you can say something like, maybe that wasn't wise for you to do, okay? And, and, and what I mean by that is sometimes I've heard it is that there's parents that will say like, oh, you're just a dumb, stupid person. And they made, and, and, and what they were telling that kid is that you're a dumb, stupid kid. Instead of maybe saying like, maybe that action was stupid. Maybe, maybe what you just did was dumb, okay? Not that that child fully overall is a dumb and stupid person. So it's really, you have to be really mindful about how you speak to your children. No, there's nothing wrong with disciplining your children. There's nothing wrong with correcting your children. But be mindful of how you do it and how you say it. Okay, that it doesn't destroy their life. Just because your daughter wears the wrong thing once, don't tell her, you're just an HOE and you're always going to be a whore. Don't do that. Even fathers, don't. You're a whore just like your mother. Don't do that to your daughter. Okay? Remember, it is very, very important. Okay? Very, very important how you speak to your children, women. All right? Even to yourself. Negative self talk. Okay, that can destroy you, that can destroy your inner peace, your inner man. So, it's really important that you are speaking life onto yourself as well. It's really important that you are telling yourself that you're beautiful, that you're amazing, that you're great, that you're a great mother, that you're a great woman, that you're an amazing woman, that you're an amazing person. Okay, that you are a woman of God, that you were bought, you were bought. Okay, that your price is far above rubies, that you are worth it, that you deserve things. It's important that you talk life to your even yourself. Okay, and even in your relationships. So if you're a married woman or you're a woman who's in a, courting sh a courtship, or even if you just have friends, you have family members, you have people around you, it's really, really important that you speak to the people you love with life. Okay, you wonder after a while if you're telling your husband all the time, like, you're a failure, you're so dumb, you're stupid, like, you, you just, you can't get nothing right. Like, you're just this, you're just that, you're just, and you're just always telling him that. That is also going to destroy him. Okay, if you're telling your friend that, if you're telling your mother, your sister anyone that in your life people are human people have emotions you're going to tear people down so it's really really important that you understand the impact of your words on people around you in yourself it's really important to learn the habit of speaking less and hearing more okay 
in first corinthians god talks about be uh be slow to speak okay be slow to wrath but be quick to hear okay god wants us you know like my mom used to always say god gave you two ears for a reason and one mouth okay so i i think god wants you to hear a little bit more than what you speak okay that's what she used to tell me i don't know if any of you guys' mom used to tell you that too but it's really really important that you learn when and when it's appropriate to say things how it's appropriate to say things and when to just not say things okay but be willing to hear more okay all right a wise person a wise woman learns the importance of her words and the importance of silence okay another thing that i see a lot of women young women older women older women doing christian women doing is gossiping gossiping okay and that's not right okay gossip is a ref if a person is gossiping it's a reflection of them okay you must not be happy with your life you must not be satisfied with your life to sit here and waste time out of your life to gossip about another person's life that you don't walk in their shoes. You don't know who they are. You don't know what they experienced. You don't know what they've been through. As a Christian woman, you should be praying. If you see a young girl who's out there living a fast lifestyle or a lifestyle that doesn't seem holy and acceptable unto God and you say you are a Christian woman, then your duty is to pray for her. Maybe even to talk to her directly and mentor her, but is to pray for her, not gossip about her and talk about her and demean her. And God talks about that several times throughout scripture. This is not my personal opinion. God says in Proverbs eleven thirteen, 13, a talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is faithful of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. So if even if a, a young woman or someone get, tells you a, a story or shares something personal about their life, it is your job and your duty to keep their story, to protect their story, to not share their story and gossip about their story. Even if they aren't the ones to tell you, if someone else was to tell you, it should stop with you. And not be given on to other people. One thing that even before my walk as a Christian woman that is stayed with me in my life as a young woman is that it's really, really important to me to protect the stories of other people. It's really, really important to not gossip to me about other people. One, it could stem from the fact that I've been through so much and I've experienced so much that I'm like, who am I to gossip? Who am I to speak on someone else's life? Because all of the decisions I've made in my life and I understood the person I was, maybe that helps. But at the same time, I've also seen what gossip does to people and the destruction it brings about. And so... Even, even now, it's even more stronger because God is actually calling me and saying, do not gossip. Okay? Even, don't even engage in gossip. Okay? Even if you're around a bunch of church women or women who they start gossiping about some other, someone else, you know what you do? You remove yourself from the situation. You say, well, it was nice to see all you guys. Take care. And you remove yourself out of that. Do not engage in it. Do not conduct gossip. Do not do gossip and say gossip, spread gossip. Don't even be involved in it. Okay? Because remember, even the appearance of evil is wrong. God also says in Proverbs 20, 19, that he that goeth about as a talebearer, bearer, bearer revealeth secrets. 
Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. So in other words, God is saying you cannot trust someone who would talk about things told in private. So do not be friends with someone who talks too much. If someone's talking a lot to you about someone else, guess what? I guarantee that they are also talking about your business as well. So it's really important that to, to, to not entertain those types of relationships or those situations. Now, again, yes, it, you, you, you can try to talk to that person and say, hey, I think that, you know, you have an issue of gossiping. Maybe you should stop gossiping. And if they hear you, great. But if they continue to do it, they don't care, then it's probably wise and best for you to exit outside of that relationship. And if you're someone who is gossiping, someone who God considers a tail bearer, then it's, it's time to do a heart check and figure out why do you feel it's so necessary to spread other people's business and bring another person down and tear another person down. Why do you think it's okay to do that? And ask yourself that, okay? Do not slander people or associate with people who slander people. Even, again, even if you're not the one gossiping, you are guilty by communion with them and not telling them to stop, okay? Next, not everything needs to be said. Not everything needs to be said, okay? In, in, in Ecclesi okay. in Ecclesiastics 10.4, God says, if the spirit of the ruler rises against you, do not leave your post for reconciliation pacifies his great offenses so in other words god is saying if your boss is angry with you or someone is angry with you remain calm and helpful do not quit or rise against them but by remaining calm and helpful you can even correct correct their great mistakes or the great mistakes that are happening against you so just because someone is rude to you, just because some, someone says something wrong to you, just because your boss makes you mad and upset today, just because your spouse makes you upset today, just because your mom, your sister, whoever, your brother makes you upset today does not mean you have to pay evil with evil and does not mean you have to say something back that can also hurt them. Okay? Be humble. Be quiet, remain calm, okay? Because guess what? You can win over an angry person. You can win over an evil person by just being loving, by being kind, by being silent, okay? Not everything needs to be said, all right? Because once you say something, you can't take it back. You cannot take it back, okay? Proverbs 10, 19 also states that in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. So a person who talks too much gets in trouble, but a wise person learns to be quiet. So that's another verse, just God talking about, you know, be quiet, okay? Learn to be quiet, learn to be wise. And I know that's hard, especially in today's world. <laughs> And I know it's hard when someone makes you mad, when someone pees you off, it is hard. <laughs> Trust me, I know. I come from the background where, you know, I, I say something, <laughs> you know, say something, you know, like I've come from that. I know how hard it is, but it's so beneficial. When you learn to control your mouth and learn not to speak every time something happens. Learning not to react to things, but learning to respond, even if that response is in silence. Okay? All right. Remember, there is a time and place for everything. There is a time and place for everything. There's a time for war. There's a time for silence. There's a time for... Uh, love there's a time for crying and okay like there's a time for everything 
okay? This doesn't mean just let the world walk over you and let people walk all over you and things like that, but this is about choosing your battles wisely. This is about learning to, even in your heated moments, in your worst moments, having power and control over your tongue, learning to respond well. We won't all do this perfect. I still don't do this perfect all the time. But the more you practice it, the more you work on it, the more you will perfect it, okay? Um, another thing is, another thing I wanna talk about is, cause I grew up in kind of like the, the hood. I grew up in the hood, I grew up in, you know, so I still have, you know, it's still there. <laughs> um, being real versus being respectful, okay? Being direct versus being respectful, okay? There's differences, you know? And what I mean by being real is meaning, you know, sharing everything, telling someone off, you know, and doing all that to them to hurt their feelings. Like sometimes we be like, oh, I'm just being real. I'm just telling them like it is. Okay. Man, it's been a while, Lord. Y'all see how I sound? <laughs> oh, Lord, the Lord has changed me. I bet. I don't even sound gangster no more saying it. Being real, like that's glorified in the community that I came from, okay? Like, no, okay? You, you don't have to be real and hurt somebody's feelings all the time, okay? Yes, you can be honest. It's the difference between being real and, you know, being honest, but being honest in a way that is also respectful, okay? Again, not a, not making it your goal to tear someone down and destroy them, okay? Re you know, figuring out the difference between those two, being real versus being respectful, okay? Being direct and being respectful. You know, sometimes even being direct can come off very rude. And that's someone who I am very direct. And sometimes people take it really harshly. And they take it like, oh man, what are you saying? Like, they take it really harshly. And it's probably something that I don't even realize that I'm doing, but it's because of how I grew up and how I've learned to be real and be direct about things that sometimes I be cutting deep. I can cut deep with my words, deep. <laughs> and I know a lot of you who listening like, yeah, I can cut deep too. We know what to say to cut deep at somebody. So be mindful of how you do it. Okay. Don't, don't be out here cutting deep and hurting people. <laughs> don't do it. Okay. Um, also the difference between positive feedback and constructive criticism versus negative feedback and criticism. Okay, know the difference, all right? There's a thing called positive feedback and there's a thing called negative feedback, okay? Telling somebody that they're selfish and, and, and wrong, that's negative, okay? Maybe you can say like the action that you did was, it's, it seemed selfish, it, it, it was a selfish action, but you don't have to entirely make a person be selfish. You don't have to call a person entirely selfish just because they did one thing that seems selfish, okay? You don't have to um, bring down a person's full character because they made one mistake or did one thing wrong. Focus on the mistake. Focus on that one thing and talk to them about it, okay? In a way that is helpful, in a way that they will actually learn and gain from it. If you come to someone with negative feedback and um, criticism, most likely they're going to be defensive and they're not going to hear it. Okay. Yeah. There are people out here, no matter how you put it, they're going to be defensive and not hear it. We can't do anything about that. But for the most part, there are a lot of people out here that if you do come with them with positive feedback or cr constructive criticism, they're, they, they will take it in. They will hear it. Okay. So just try to be mindful and know the difference. Um, and also understand the dangers of never speaking up. Again, I don't want you to be a doormat. I don't want you to be the rug. Um, so, you know, do speak up for yourself. 
just know the appropriate way to speak up for yourself still have boundaries young woman still have your you know your your things that you need in place that people need to do to respect you people still deserve to give you respect and people still deserve to respect your boundaries okay so don't be a doormat being like, oh, you just did that to me. Oh, okay. You did that. That's okay. No. <laughs> like, you still <laughs> can defend yourself. You can still stand up for yourself in a respectful way. Okay? All right? Um, so shifting from speaking depth to speaking life is so... So I hope this video is helping you realize the importance from shifting your words from speaking death to speaking life, okay? It's really important that as women, as mothers who are going to have children or have children, that we're speaking life to our children. If we have a husband, we have a, a significant other in our life, it's important to be speaking life unto him and to be encouraging him, to be uplifting him. And it's important too as well if we have relationships in our life, like our fathers, our siblings, our friends, our coworkers, if we're a boss and we have employees, it's important that we also speak life and encourage them as well. Okay, and it's also important that we learn how to, you know, deliver criticism and we deliver feedback in an appropriate way. And we also learn when it is when it's more beneficial to be silent than it is to speak at times. And again, all this comes with trial and error and learning. Okay, trial, error and learning. I like to think of it this way. Try to adopt these types of mindsets thinking that I would rather understand than to be understood, okay? And I know that can seem a little like, oh, wait, wait, wait. But listen, when you're seeking to listen to people truly and to understand people truly, you're able to better connect with other people rather than I just need to share my opinion. I just need them to understand how, where I'm coming from. This is my point of view. This is where I'm coming from. He needs to understand what I am saying. Or she needs to understand what I am saying. Do you see how that only limits you to get your point across? But not to also understand their point? Okay? So trying to truly listen to people. Trying to truly understand people. Okay? And then also, when it comes to relationships that you do care about, would you rather be right or be reconciled in that relationship? Asking yourself that question. Would I rather be right or reconciled with my husband or my significant other or with my mother or my father or my mother-in-law or my father-in-law like what would I rather want okay and then also what type of child do you want to raise okay what kind of child do you want to raise do you want a child who has high self-esteem high uh confidence and self-worth God confidence, okay? Do you want that for your child? If yes, then it's important that you are speaking life to them, that you are encouraging them, that you are uplifting them, and that you are not speaking the same words that your mother spoke to you, your grandmother, or your foster parent, or someone else spoke to you, but changing that habit right now, stopping that generational uh, habit right now, and saying today I am going to be different to my children. I am not going to call my children out their names. I am not going to call my children uh, stupid and dumb. And compare them to their father in a negative or their, their father in a negative way. I will not do that. Okay? I'm going to speak life to my children. And then when it comes to yourself. Stop destroying yourself today, okay? Try to start today to capture that negative self-talk. When you see yourself talking to yourself in a negative way that, oh, I'm not worth it, or I'm dumb, or I'm stupid, or I'm not this, or I'm not that, stop it right now in those tracks, right now. Mm-mm, no more, okay? Because you're not stupid, you're not dumb, you are worth it. 
you are deserving, you are amazing, and you are great, and you're worth loving, okay? And even if people in your life have not shown you, showed you the right type of love, you are loved, I love you, God loves you. No, I will never love you as much as God does, but he loves you. You matter. You're not a mistake. God knew you when you were forming in your mother's womb. Okay? Stop that negative self-talk because it will only lead to destruction, to suicide, to depression. Okay? To unwanted behaviors that you don't need in your life. Okay? So, to end this video, I just want everyone to um, remember Psalms 141.3 and to pray that onto God. Okay, to say, God, again, set a guard, O Lord, over and before my mouth. Keep watch over the doors of my lips. Repeat that scripture. Repeat that in your prayer to God. To God, correct my mouth. Guard my lips. Help me to be a wise woman when I speak. Help me to have control over my tongue. Let me not destroy myself. Let me not destroy my home. Let me not destroy my, my friends, my family, people around me anymore with my mouth. But God, let me be, be someone who speaks life and not death. Let me be a wise woman. If I'm gossiping, God, take this away from me. Help me, Lord. And also in that prayer, while you're praying, put the actions behind it, okay? Stop. <laughs> take control, all right? You can do it. It's going to take some time, but you can do it, all right? So, I just want you guys to share this video. If you know it would be beneficial to someone else, maybe it didn't help you. Maybe it did a little bit. But I'm sure you know someone that it will help, okay? So share this video. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Like this video. Comment below if you need to, to talk about some things that I talked about in this video or share your opinion. I'm asking for it. Or even if you have an, an idea that you want me to do for another video, share that all in the comments below, okay? So I love you. God loves you. Take care. Bye.